Response can be found in the binder number two. Halle, halle, halle.
it's Easter season, you know, so <laughs> if it was Easter Sunday last Sunday, but we say that this is the season of Easter. Hello, hello, everybody. Everybody okay today? Yes, okay. It's been uh, cold, it's cold outside today, isn't it? Does it feel like a little different than last week when it was so beautiful outside? I know, and it's so cool. I'm wearing my wool shirt again today. Oh, it was so stormy last night. Was anybody scared? You, you were terrified? Yeah, Sarah was scared. Anybody else scared last night? A lot of people were scared. They said, go to your lowest point in the house. Sarah's right behind you, right here. Sarah. No, so even adults were scared. My dogs were scared, very, very scared. So, well, I want to talk today about um, about how sometimes we feel like things are just not going our way. Have you ever had that happen to you, where you think you're doing all the right things and things just aren't going your way? Anybody? Yeah, Stella, you want to talk about it? School? Anything in particular? <coughs> The school. And my cow was scared. Your your cow was scared. Cat. Oh, I was gonna say you have a cow at home. Your cat was your cat was scared, isn't it? Okay. Well, so Stella, sometimes school isn't going. Any, and what? Oh. Well, I didn't quite understand what you were saying there, June, because Gloria has you back on your back there. Gloria, you want to sit up so that poor, oh, you're, it's core, core work. So, um, okay. All right, well, so sometimes life doesn't go the way you want it to go. You know, you think, oh, what have I done to deserve this? Have you ever thought that? What have I done to deserve this? I try my hardest to be a good person, and still sometimes things go wrong. Well, that's what happened to Dorothy. She felt like everything she did, something happened that was bad. She tried and she tried. She tried to say the right thing. She tried to do the right thing. And still, things didn't uh, come together the way she wanted them to. She was very sad. She was very sad and she said, oh, I don't know what to do. I feel like all alone and forgotten. And what do you think happened? Poor old Dorothy. Oh no. <laughs> no, she didn't. <laughs> she, I'm not going to repeat that because yeah, that's a bit too scared. Uh, no, she didn't. You know what happened? One day she was sitting all by herself, and this person that she didn't ever really talk to at school came up to her and spoke to her and said, It seems like you're very sad, Dorothy. And she said, I am very sad. How did you know? And she said, because I was watching and you just seemed sad. Does that ever happen that somebody picks up on something that's going on? You have a friend or something that knows when you're sad. What do they do when they know you're sad, when your friends know you're sad? What do they do to help you out? Um, when I was sad, my friend came up to me and said, uh, And how did you feel after that? You felt better. Well, that's what this friend did to you. She said, can I give you a hug? And Dorothy said, yes. And you know what? Sometimes, I'm just going to tell you, Dorothy's life didn't all of a sudden get better. Do you know what I mean? Still, life was hard for her. Still, school was hard, right? Still, those things were hard. But she knew that she had a friend who would give her a hug if she needed. And that was really important for Dorothy. <coughs> she had people in her corner always to help her out. And so here's what I'm going to say. Sometimes we need somebody to be in our corner to help us out, like Stella, you were talking about before you were talking about. And sometimes we need to be in somebody's point to help them be here. Yeah. Right. So we can put in that box to start to watch people. We want to encourage us to be mindful of people around us, that we might be able to be the one who whispers in their ear and says, I'm here for you. And sometimes that's all we can do. All right, thanks. Thanks a lot, everybody. Are you going to fall asleep? Oh dear. Okay. Well, that's too bad because uh, Jim, there's some really cool things at the table here for you to do. Okay, let's stand up, circle up, and we'll say a quick prayer, and then there's uh, some great little things for you to do here at the table. 
Does anybody want to pray? Shall I? Okay. Dear God, oh, sometimes life just doesn't go the way we want it. So we pray uh, for our people to be around us who will support us in those times. And we pray that we might be the friend that somebody needs in those hard times. Uh, help us be mindful and aware. Amen. All right. So can we be back to see you? <clears throat> Our first reading this morning is from Ezekiel. The Holy One's power overcame me, and while I was in the Holy One's spirit, God led me out and set me down in the middle of a certain valley. It was full of bones. God led me through them all around, and I saw that there were a great many of them on the valley floor, and they were very, very dry. God asked me, Human one, can these bones live again? And I said, oh God, only you know. God said to me, prophesy over these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the Holy One's word. The Lord God proclaimed to these bones, I am about to put breath in you and you will live again. I will put sinew in your place and flesh on you and cover you with skin. When I put breath in you and you come to life, you will know that I am the Holy One. I prophesied. 
prophesied just as I was commanded. There was a great noise as I was prophesying to them. Then a great quaking, and the bones came together, bone by bone. And when I looked, suddenly there were sinew on them. And the flesh appeared, and they were covered over with the skin. But there was still no breath in them. And God said to me, Prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, human one. Say to the breath, the Lord God proclaims, Come from the four winds, breath. Breathe into these dead bodies and let them live. I prophesied just as God commanded me. And when the breath entered them, they came to life and stood on their feet, an extraordinary large company. God said to me, Human ones, these bones are the entire house of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up and our hopes have perished. We are completely finished. So now prophesy and say to them, the Lord God proclaims, I am opening your graves. I will raise you up from your graves, my people, and I will bring you to Israel's firm land. You will know that I am the Holy One. When I open your graves and raise you up from your graves, my people, I will put my breath in you and you will live. I will plant you on your fertile land and you will know that I am the Holy One. I have spoken and I will do this. This is what the Holy One says. And a poem by Jan Richardson. Dry and dry and dry in each direction. Dust dry, desert dry, bone dry. And here in your own heart dry, the center of your chest, a bare valley, stretching out every way you turn. Did you think this is where you had come to die? It is true that you may do need to do some crumbling, yes. There are some things that you have protected that may want to be laid bare, yes. That you will be asked to let go and let go, yes. But listen, this is what a desert is for. If you have come here desolate, if you have come here deflated, then thank your Lord's lucky stars. The desert is where you have landed, here where it is hard to hide, here where it is unwise to look, rely on your own devices, here where you will have to look and look again and look close to find what refreshment waits to reveal itself to you. I tell you, though it may be hard to see it now, this is where your greatest blessing will find you. I tell you, this is where you will receive life again. I tell you, this is where the breath begins. For the wisdom contained in these holy words, we give thanks. Amen. for everyone you meet, even if they don't want it. What seems conceived bad manners, so cynicism is always a sign of things no ears have heard, no eyes have seen. You don't know what wars are going on down where the spirit meets the bone. Ring the bells that still can ring. Forget your perfect offering. There is a crack in everything. That's how the light gets our bones are dried up and our hope has perished. We are completely finished. Those were the words of the people of Israel. Bones were everywhere the eye could see. Dry bones, very, very dry bones, long dead and seemingly forgotten. 
That was Ezekiel's vantage point in the valley. That's how Ezekiel saw the people of Israel dry bones, very, very dry bones, long dead and forgotten. Edwina Gately's words that Karen read on Good Friday come to my mind. No more to reach and find firm hold, only empty chasms around me, no more to stand on ground secure. All, all is swept away, and I, a naked child in the night, lost, bewildered, alone. No father now to hold me up, no Lord to strengthen me, no spirit to breathe a touch of life. In this night of desolation and the deepest, darkest pain of all shrieks wildly through my anguish. The love is gone, the joy is done, up and die. You see, in the story, the people of Israel, the people of Israel had turned away from God. The people of Israel had forgotten God's direction to care for people who were vulnerable. Instead, they were greedy and dishonest in their economic dealings, craved power and status, and trampled on people who were poor, cried out, peace, peace, when there was no peace, and things fell apart. Babylon swept through, took their land, destroyed their temple, and exiled the people of Israel far and wide. The people were yanked out of their homes and stripped of their ways of doing things in the world. Their communal way of living and worshiping was thwarted by the disbursement of their people into a strange and hostile land. It seemed like they were cut off from God, like God had forgotten them. It felt like the end. They were like dry bones, very, very dry bones. And then, and then God swung by and asked Ezekiel if those bones could live again. Though it clearly appeared the answer would be no, because really, Ezekiel, wise, even in a dream state, replied, Oh God, only you know. How diplomatic. I guess God thought the bones could live again because God gave Ezekiel directions to make it happen, prophesied to the bones, and there was a great quaking even as Ezekiel spoke, and the bones came together bone by bone, sinew came next and then flesh, and there they were, all of those bo dry bones put back together, but without breath. God was not finished. Say to the breath, the Lord God proclaims, come from the four winds breath, breathe into these dead bodies and let them live. And Ezekiel said it, and the bodies breathed. Twice in the prophetic call out of the bones, God told Ezekiel to pass along these words. When I put breath in you and you come to life, you will know that I am the Holy One. You see, God had not forgotten the people. The people had forgotten God. And the breath of God brought them back to life. Breath. God's breath. Ruach in Hebrew. It shows up ten times in different forms in the first 14 verses of Ezekiel's 37th chapter. Did you catch that when Christine was reading 10 times? This repetition suggests that ruach is an important word in the story, right? Like if you hear something 10 times in 14 verses, right, you think it's important, right? It's very important. This word, not coincidentally, shows up in both stories of creation. In the first chapter of Genesis, God's breath, Ruach, shows up when the earth was an unformed void, when there was chaos, and God turned the chaos into the world. In the second chapter of Genesis, God's breath, Ruach, shows up when God formed the earth creature out of dust, breathed life into the earth creature's nostrils, and the earth creature became a living soul. God's breath calms the chaos. God's breath creates life. God's breath brings very, very dry bones back to life.
when it feels like our bones are dried up, our hope has perished, and we are completely finished, when it seems like God has forgotten us, when chaos swirls all around us, God's life-giving breath shows up. We just have to call on God's breath to come around. I don't know about you, but it seems to me that in these days there is a lot of chaos swirling about in the world. In these days, an ever-speed-increasing ball rolls towards us, picking up more and more restrictive policies and hate-filled rhetoric at each turn. And it seems less and less likely that we can stop it before it rolls over us and crushes us. In fact, it has crushed many a person already who has gotten in its way. We fear for our lives and the lives of people we love. And we wonder, where is God? Has God forgotten us? I don't know about you, but it seems to me that in these days, there's a lot of chaos swirling about in my mind and in my soul, too. Can't keep up with the tasks at hand. Not enough hours in the day. Don't know where to start. Sometimes it feels like no matter what you do, it's not enough. Say the wrong thing wrong thing. Nobody seems to be happy. Life is throwing too many risks your way. You do not feel emotionally capable of making one more decision. Why, even choosing what to eat for dinner is almost too much. The people closest to you are struggling. There is nothing you can do to help them find their way. You are working hard, but the ends are nowhere close to meeting. You are tired and falling apart. Your bones are dried up, and your hope has perished. You are completely finished. And you wonder, where is God? Has God forgotten you? Seems to me we are in need of a little life-giving breath as a world, a nation, a community, and individuals when it seems like everything is going wrong and there is no help. God asks the question, can these bones live? The response, God only knows. <laughs> only God knows. And then a prophetic word is shared and bones begin to come back together. Sinew and flesh upon them. A call goes out, come from the four winds, breath. Breathe into these dead bodies and let them live. God's breath comes around and gives life to the body and soul. Long thought forgotten. In the verses, just before the ones read this morning, God said, A new heart I will give you, and a new spirit I will put within you, and I will move, remove from your body the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. Then the nations that are left all around you shall know that I, the Holy One, have rebuilt the ruined places and replanted that which was desolate. I, the Holy One, have spoken, and I will do it. Ezekiel's vision gives us hope, hope that God is actually present with us. We are not forgotten at all in every breath we take, giving our body life. God is there. What would happen? What would happen if we stopped for just a second or two and lived into our next breath? Not thinking about trying, not thinking about anything but taking our next breath. Taking the next breath of God into our bodies. <clears throat> Try it. <coughs> our life has not in any way gotten better. Our situation is still the same, but did you feel it? Just a flutter of God's life giving breath, a bit of calmness coming through your body when you actually centered yourself on taking the next breath. God doesn't promise things will get better. Sorry. God does promise a future and promises to be there in it. God is as near as our next breath. If you have come here desolate, if you have come here deflated, then thank your lucky stars the desert is where you have landed. Here, where it is hard to hide. Here, 
where it is unwise to rely on your own devices. Here, where you will have to look and look again and look close to find what refreshment waits to reveal itself to you. Here. I tell you, though it may be hard to see it now, this is where your greatest blessing will find you. I tell you, this is where you will receive your life again. I tell you, this is where the breath begins. Here, where hatred and fear flourish. Here, where bodies are beaten down, souls are wounded, and hearts are broken. Here, where uncertainty abounds and doubt overwhelms. Even here, in this place, in this time, God's breath brings life. Ezekiel's vision gives us hope God has not forgotten us. God is with us, steadfastly loving us, even and especially in our most difficult days. God is here. God is as near as our next breath. God brings new life, even to very, very dry bones. Amen. Let us stand in body or spirit now and sing together from your hymn book, 292, Breathe on the Breath of God. Number 292 in your hymn book.
I have a joy for the the naming talent that this congregation has. We have this uh, amazing meeting space in the new office, and we asked you all to come up with names, and then we asked you to vote on them. And so we have a ta-da tally, and uh, a big winner here is uh, the name of Peace Hall. That room shall forever now be named Peace Hall. <laughs> So thank you all. Uh, and then one day a month ago really put us on the spot saying there will be a prize, right? No, somebody asked was there going to be a prize, and I said yes. I, I'm assuming that's how it went. Yeah. But, so uh, do we have, no one wrote their, whoever came up with Peace Hall did not write their name. <laughs> was, it, was it you? We could have, we could have up to three winners because Cindy has, three wonderful prizes. Uh, so if whoever came up with Peace Hall would identify yourself, or we'll just put those prizes in for the next big contest that we have. Anyway, Peace Hall is what it will be called. So thank you. Well, thank you. That is a joy. I'm not sure how to pray about that, but let's pray that we call it Peace Hall, or that we are lifted up in that space, loving God. Other joys or concerns to be lifted up? I have a joy. I get to spend the next week with my granddaughter, oh, my son and daughter-in-law too, but me and my <laughs> granddaughter. So Carol, the safe travels, and the reason that Carol is doing that is because it's her birthday, so um, happy birthday. We, you know what, I know that we haven't been singing happy birthday to people, and I'm sorry about that, so maybe we should just do March and April birthdays. Who had birthdays in March and April? All right, well let's sing happy birthday right now to them. Happy birthday, Susan. Happy birthday, Susan. Happy birthday, dear friends. Happy birthday, Susan. I'll try to be better about that. Well, we're praying for you as you have that wonderful trip, loving God. I want to pray for tolerance. And this morning I was praying for tolerance for them. But then I realized we all need tolerance. And as my mom said, just because you think you're right doesn't mean you are. Oh, let's pray for that, loving God. Oh, let's, pray, let's pray for that, loving God. Yeah. All right. Any other joys or concerns to be lifted up this morning? Sippy. I know Kevin will probably talk about this later, um, but if anybody has anybody queer, especially anybody who is trans or non-binary, sorry, no, this is really hard. Like, the queer community is really scared right now. Um, and having to work and live in places where we are not recognized, um, even when we are open about those things, um, if you have someone in your life who is trans, who is non-binary, who is queer, Please reach out to them and tell them that you love them. It is very important right now. Well, we'll pray that we can be the person in the corner for those folks that we love and folks we don't even know, just like we were talking about with the kids. Loving God. Other joys or concerns to be lifted up this morning? Well then let us take a moment to pray silently for those things that have been lifted to our attention. I open our hearts and minds to the many things that have been left unspoken.
earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, to the us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Now how shall we join God's work in the world? Oh, there you are. <laughs> That's like, I knew you were here. Kevin's coming up. I, I also just want to lift something up uh, today in our uh, group of people. We, I realize that we're coming up on a vote on May 7th, right? The congregation, the uh, governing body is going to rec make a recommendation next Sunday. Um, and I know there are some among us who have not officially become members. Some of us have transferred membership and we want to lift that up, but there are others who ha haven't done that. If you want that opportunity to do that before we take the vote on May 7th, why? I would sure welcome a word from you. Uh, just give me a call or a text or an email. You know how to get a hold of me. It's pretty easy. And we can uh, have a conversation about that. I'm not sure when that would be, but it would be before May 7th. I guess it's either the 23rd or the 30th. <laughs> uh, so that we've got only two days. So uh, anyway, just just for you to keep that in mind. All right, Kevin. Uh, actually pretty quick this evening. Uh, Zippy, I'm sorry I don't have anything specific, but what I would say is that uh, a lot of the issues regarding uh, trans rights um, are in the state senate. So if you have a personal story to tell, um, please make sure to contact your state senator and, and tell that story and tell them that the, the, the rules, the laws moving through right now are going to do damage uh, to people that we love. So, so please do that. Um, we are still looking to have uh, blank signatures for people to take home and get signatures for raising the minimum wage and uh, uh, paid time off, paid leave. We don't have those just yet. Hopefully within the next week I can have those to, to distribute to folks. Now the only thing on the calendar that's coming up immediately is this Saturday evening. There is a, 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 a guest speaker over at our friends at uh, Christ Lutheran Church over at 1 Selma Avenue at the corner of Selma and Lockwood. Um, it is Reverend uh, Ellie Dow, um, and she is the author of Baptized in Tear Gas. She spent time working in Ferguson uh, during that turbulent time, and uh, it is a workshop to, you know, uh, to, to look more at ourselves and what we can do with the world. So it's an opportunity at one of our neighbors, and uh, they, they have a couple of uh, members that participate in our Wednesday evening group, and I want to invite folks again. That, that Wednesday evening group is, is open for everyone to come and listen and, and hear what we're doing uh, as a community with, with other churches within uh, Webster groups. Thanks. So as Wendy said, um, May 7th, we do have a congregational meeting. Um, it'll be about 11.45. It will be hybrid. So if you're unable to be here in person, you can. Um, but prior to that, next Sunday, which is a full day, uh, 8.45 is going to be the results of the survey that we took last Christmas time um, for the CDF initiative. And then we have church, and then we have some baptisms out at the uh, quad, the fountain. And then we're going to have an informational meeting here to uh, kind of talk to you about the board's recommendation for the next steps in the sale of our property. Um, you will get a, a special email uh, probably later today and um, come with your questions, come with an open mind and heart and hear the exciting news that we have to share. And that email will be what? What will that email include? Oh, the email is going to include uh, our proposal and some background information about it. So the meeting, will that meeting be on, on uh, Zoom as well? Next, next Sunday. Next, uh, next, next, next Sunday. Next Sunday will be both 
in person and on Zoom. Great. Thank you. And, and I should say, uh, it came up in uh, choir, I think it was choir, but uh, on Thursday, uh, which reminds me, if anybody wants to sing in the choir, why, you should come on Thursday night at 7. I'm just going to say from my own personal experience, it's just a really great place to be on a Thursday evening at 7. So come on. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, the, the meeting on the 7th, the vote on the 7th, will also be hybrid, correct? So people will be able to, even if they're not here, they can join uh, on Zoom and vote. So I think that's uh, important for folks to know, because I know there are some people who will not be in town. All right, are there other things to be looking at? Um, those are spelled out. I think they're, the, they're Zoom. The one on the 25th is in person. It's Peace Hall. Uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, the two meetings on May 2nd at 1 p.m. and 6 p.m. are on Zoom. Did everybody hear that? The 25th in person in Peace Hall at 6 o'clock and the other two? May 2nd, May 2nd on Zoom. And they should, they're in uh, news and notes, so you, so you should just be able to pull news and notes up and find that information. Uh, is there anything else that needs to be lifted up this morning? All right. Well, then let us take a moment to pray. Gracious God, we give thanks and ask your blessings on the many and diverse gifts we bring to join you in your work in the world. Amen. And now let us sing, first of all, I'm just going to make note here before I ask us to stand up and sing. It's 10.52. <laughs> I just want to make this may never happen again, but we're going to end on time. Hallelujah. All right, let's stand up and sing Body Your Spirit and sing from your hymn book 286, Spirit, Spirit of Gentleness. Hymn number 286, Please Stand in Body Your Spirit.
to go into the world, the sacred place. Let us remember we are not forgotten. God is there with us with each breath we take. Go out and be God's breath in the world. Don't lose it.